Hello guys, today let's see how to learn data science faster. Yes, there is a way to learn data science faster. Let us see who all are eligible to learn that way. And also we will see the common mistakes that we all commit. We will see how to avoid those mistakes. Yes, it is possible to learn data science faster. What? This guy said, you need six months of time to learn data science. Now he's saying you can learn data science faster. That doesn't make any sense. Is he bluffing? No. First of all, there is a criteria. Suppose you are a data analyst and you, you deal with data day in day out. You know programming languages like Python and R, then you are eligible. Another case is you are a core Python programmer. You deal with big data day in day out and you are supporting your data science team by providing their engineering requirements, then you are eligible. And another one is you did some data science course and you executed few models, but you are struggling to get into data science stream, then you are eligible for this crash course as well. If you are a beginner, just starting to learn data science, I would recommend you to follow that six months learning plan that I discussed in my previous videos. Here, we are going to discuss about this crash course. Stay tuned and please subscribe to my channel. It will motivate me to do more such videos and share my experiences and you will get a notification when I do so. Let's start. So this crash course is based on the method called reverse engineering. What is reverse engineering? Reverse engineering is nothing but picking up a cool project and backtrack it, learn data science in that process. Not everyone is a good conventional learner. If you like learning from the backtracking, yes, this is the ideal path for you. So you just need to pick up a project, tear it down till very granular step of it and learn that process of data science. Now let's see the how we need to do that, how we need to learn most out of this process. The common mistake that we make in this particular process is like we select a project, we will see what kind of model is used and we will just see how to execute it. If you are not going to that very tiny granular level of that project, it is not going to help you. It is not going to give you any learnings. Divide that project into these steps. Learn and understand data science life cycle, life cycle of that particular project. There are maybe five to six methods. What is the business scenario that is motivated to do that project? Second thing could be data collection. How you collected the data? Third thing is feature engineering. Fourth thing is feature selection. Fifth thing is how you, what kind of model you selected? How you validated that model? And next step is model deployment and model maintenance or monitoring. And the last one is how this particular model is helped to solve that business problem. How you can explain it in a layman's terms. You need to note down all these things if you are trying to learn data science in a reverse engineering method. Let's see what are the steps you may need to understand in, the, in this process. What kind of business scenario that is motivated to do that particular model. Write down your own story. And if you write your own story, you'll be able to explain it better and discuss with your peers. That is step one. Step two, see how you extract the data. Is it from a third party APIs or e-learning platforms? Is it from the data lying in your organization? Or you extracted that data through web scraping? Just build a story how you extracted that particular data. Because day in, day out, all data scientists do that. Selecting the data is a critical part of your model building process because that is going to drive your model. The second thing is also see how you are going to store that particular data. When you are learning, you may not be having high configuration systems to execute or handle large set of data sets. So in those scenarios, how you handled, write down your story of that data extraction. Next step is feature engineering. Now let's see how you did data sanity checks like missing value treatment, how you handled duplicate rows, how you treated outliers, how you normalized or standardized your data. I mean, what kind of data transformation techniques that you used. And also, if you are working on any time series model, if you are having seasonal data, how you split your train and test data. Now, next step is feature selection. It's nothing but picking up the right variable for your model. What kind of process you followed to pick up those variables? If you checked correlation or covariance, how you managed? You may need to focus on concepts like weight of evidence, information value. Now, next step is 
model selection why you selected that particular model is it based on that is it is it based on accuracy you need to try different models of that kind before you select particular model suppose if you are working on solving a regression problem you may start with linear regression then you go to lasso regression then you may try ada boost regressor random forest regressor maybe xg boost regressor and out of these five you may select the model which is giving you more accuracy if your accuracies are very close for all these five models you may need to select the one which executed in short span of time so you may you need to note down how much time each model took you might have selected 30 odd features when you are building a model but out of those features how many of them are performing well for these five different models and note down those things and compare how different they are is every model picking up the same variable or is it a different variable if it is a different variable what could be the scenario behind it just understand those things the important part of it is model deployment you need to learn and explore lot about model deployment because model deployment is the one which you will get more understanding when you are working on a live scenarios like deploying it to aws servers deploying it to some cloud servers day in day out we don't get a chance to work on those kind of environments i think there are two ways to learn that one is flask and then one is django where you can practice this deployment you need to write down how you monitor your model over a period of time or time to time now the important thing guys don't forget to do this how it is helping your business how it is helping to answer your business questions then you will get ideas for the next project now the final step if you can reach or learn this reverse engineering to this level it will help you to understand data science life cycle better and you will be more confident of executing data science projects not only that if you are explaining these things to your interviewers when you are facing it then you are going to drive that interview it will help you to crack that interview if you say i picked up this data and executed this model then you are not giving opportunity to your interviewer to ask questions about the things you know but if you learn reverse engineering in the way that we discussed you will drive his questions in the way you want if you have the three qualities that we discussed at the start of this video then learning in a reverse engineering way is better that's it from me today guys 